G'day everyone, welcome to another episode of Mr. Code's Steam Podcast, where we talk about science and technology after school. Today we're going to be talking about this, the Raspberry Pi computer. So what is the Raspberry Pi? In short, the Raspberry Pi is a computer that is the size of a credit card. The Raspberry Pi Model B was first released in 2012 and ever since then there have been a steady number of improvements culminating to this version, the Raspberry Pi 4B. Uh, so it is a computer that runs off the Linux based operating system. Now if you have a closer look, you'll see that this uh, has all the components of the computers that you would normally think about. So uh, we have a power source that's in this um, uh, USB-C port. So it runs on a very uh, small amount of electricity. Uh, and the um, only main difference is that this computer, this Raspberry Pi, uh, it doesn't have a hard disk. So there's no hard disk here. What it uses instead is a micro SD card. So here on the back, there is a slot where you can put in the micro SD card. Looking over here, so next to our USB-C power, we have two uh, of these mini HDMI or micro HDMI ports. So you can actually run two monitors on this computer. So um, uh, you would attach this to uh, your standard uh, computer. All you have to do is make sure that one of the ends of your HDMI cable can fit inside these smaller ports. Next to that, we have a three and a half millimeter uh, audio and composite video jack. Uh, next to that, on the side, we have four USB ports. We got two USB 2 ports and then two USB 3 ports, which are faster and they're denoted by these blue pieces of plastic here. Next to that, we have a gigabit Ethernet port uh, where you can connect it to your network. And then up the top here, these are really interesting. These are called GPIO pins, which are uh, which represent general purpose input output pins. So what these are for, um, they are for attaching your Raspberry Pi computer to external hardware, things like sensors, motors, uh, other cameras or devices like um, uh, e-ink displays and so on. And these ports give your Raspberry Pi a lot of additional capability. And then finally, on the other side here is a display connector. So you can display, uh, add something like uh, an external screen or a touch screen, things like that. I can hear you ask, Mr. Code, what can I do with a Raspberry Pi computer? To which I would say, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And it can do pretty much everything a Linux desktop computer can do. The only limitation is that it doesn't have as much storage space because it is limited without a hard disk. Well, without any modifications, you can use this to create and edit documents, uh, check your email, browse the internet, and even play video games like Minecraft. It really is a fully fledged computer. The great thing about a Raspberry Pi is that it is so cheap. For around a hundred Australian dollars or 60 US dollars, you can get a fully functioning computer and you can spend as much as you want to add things like a, a protective case uh, or cooling fan, um, monitors, uh, a mouse and keyboard and so forth, just like a normal computer. And because the Raspberry Pi is so cheap and so small, you can use it to act as a controller for your home automation. You can build things like smart devices, security cameras, uh, robots, and even arcade machines. The possibilities are really endless. And here are a few examples of the ways that I use the Raspberry Pi around my home and office. My main computer is a high performance laptop, which I like to carry around with me. But at my home, I don't always need to have a really fast computer, which is why I use a Raspberry Pi as a desktop replacement. The Pi uses much less electricity than my laptop, and it can do all the things I need, like creating office documents, browsing the internet, checking my mail, and plenty of coding activities. 
The main language that Raspberry Pi uses is Python, and there are lots of resources to support Python learning on the Raspberry Pi. At my office, I customized an e-ink display and connected it to a Raspberry Pi to show my YouTube channel's current number of viewers and subscribers. Just like the Pi, the e-ink display uses very little electricity and it is a great addition to any office. You can use the display to track any other social media accounts like Instagram followers, or you can use it to uh, track weather forecasts or uh, Bitcoin prices instead. Because the Raspberry Pi uses so little electricity, uh, you can leave these machines on 24-7. Now, I am a big fan of retro games, especially the Nintendo Entertainment System. You can replace the operating system of the Raspberry Pi with a retro game emulator. Now, after that, all you need to do is find a cool retro case and some classic video arcade game controllers, and then download some classic games to play on your TV or monitor. Speaking of games, the newest Raspberry Pi is more than capable of running a Minecraft server for your network, which supports 10 or more concurrent players. There's no need to get a dedicated computer or hire a server online. You can host the coolest Minecraft parties at your house with lightning fast speeds just by using a Raspberry Pi. Don't forget to add some cooling because your Pi can run a little bit hot. It's now 2021 and a lot of people have access to 3D printers to fabricate spare parts uh, around the home or school. With the Raspberry Pi, you can add a web-based monitoring system for your 3D printer. This way you can keep an eye on your printing process without ever leaving your desk and monitor the printer temperature to ensure everything is running smoothly. As an added bonus, you can also create cool time-lapse videos for your prints just like these. A Network Attached Storage System, or NAS, is a hard disk that can be accessed by everyone on your Wi-Fi network. It is very convenient, but buying a NAS can cost hundreds of dollars, so why not build your own NAS with a Raspberry Pi for a fraction of the cost? I use a Raspberry Pi loaded with another kind of operating system designed to distribute access to any attached storage on the Pi. This way, my students in my classes can save their work onto my USB stick during a lesson and all I have to do at the end of the day is remove it to take it home with me. One of the cool new features of Raspberry Pi 4 is this build hat that allows connection between the Raspberry Pi and the LEGO Education Spike Prime and Spike Essential motors and sensors. This allows the uh, uh, the user to create robots and hardware using both the intelligence of a Raspberry Pi and also the mechanical ease of use with the Lego spike system. And that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this introduction into the Raspberry Pi. And for tutorials on how to build each of these projects, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you have a project idea, then make sure you add it in the comment section below. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.